Thanks for tuning in to Ag PhD. I'm Brian Hefty. I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. We all have a to-do list, and if one of those things on your to-do list is talk to your banker, if you're putting it off, we're going to give you some tools to help you have a positive discussion with your banker. Well, one of the big questions we get here at Ag PhD is, um, hey, you guys talk about potassium and building that up to 4% base saturation K, for example. How do I figure that exactly? Today, we want to get into the math a little bit. And don't let me scare you off by thinking this is a total math discussion. It's really not that complicated. And we'll also talk a little bit about why potassium is so important in plants. Now, if you're tired of all that math already, you might want to stay tuned for our Weed of the Week. We've got a tough to control weed. We'll show you how to get this one stopped on your farm. And first, here's our Farm Basics. These days, it can be hard to make the math work in your soybean fields. With the Liberty Link system with Liberty Herbicide, it gets easier. A two plus bushel per acre advantage over Asgro Roundup ready to extend soybeans means at least $18 more an acre for you. Plus, lower system input costs and more complete weed control all adds up to at least $33 more an acre for your farm. That's smart math. Grow smart with BASF. Going into 2019, undoubtedly you will attend some farm shows or field days, that kind of thing. And of course we want you to attend the Ag PhD Field Day in July. But another event that we think you have to attend is Commodity Classic. Well, there's so many things that are happening in agriculture and to get all those things in one place where you can learn is so valuable. And when you think about all the different th moving parts in agriculture, whether it's new seed technologies or new things in the crop protection side and great farmers who are tying them all together, that's exactly what you'll find at Commodity Classic. For each of the last few years, Darren and I have spoken at Commodity Classic and we will again this year. But for me personally, I like going to hear other great farmers talk. So when you go to this particular event, you'll find a lot of fantastic corn, soybean, wheat, and sorghum producers. And when you pick their brains a little bit and find out what they're doing, it gives me a lot of ideas for what I can do on my farm, and I'm sure it would for you as well. Well, when you get into the winter months, you start hearing about all these yields that were set around the country, and you think, wow, how did that guy raise 270 bushel corn in this environment? How did that guy raise 400 bushel corn over there? those people are going to be at Commodity Classic. They're going to talk about, hey, here's what I did, and here's some of the different things that I did, and here's what you can learn. Now, you may say, nobody's going to tell me all their secrets. A lot of these guys are willing to because, let's face it, if they're already 100 bushels of corn ahead of you, they're probably not too worried about you catching up, and you probably don't live right next to them anyway where they're worried about, oh boy, he's going to take away my farm ground or something like that. These farmers are really competitive, but they also are pretty cool in that they like to share some of these details and try and help you out as well. The other nice thing with Commodity Classic is, especially now when they combined with Ag Connect a few years ago, you can find a lot of the top companies in agriculture with booths and a lot of their great people, a lot of great displays there at Commodity Classic. So it's everything from equipment to the crop protection side, seed, fertility, biologicals, you name it. Lots of companies are there. So you get the opportunity indoors in the middle of the winter to talk to a lot of really good people that can help you with things on your farm. Well, here's one thing that's really cool. And you mentioned the equipment brand. And I like talking to some of these really top farmers from around the country, some of the top yielding guys, and they're talking about, man, we have to have good stand establishment early in order to get this yield. Great. Here's a planter right here like my planter. Show me what you're doing. Show me what you're adjusting. Show me which of these new parts you really like to put on there and what's working for you and talk about your return on investment. And to get answers like that and talk to the experts right there around these machines as well, that's pretty cool. Well, once again, it's Commodity Classic coming up in just a couple of months. We would encourage you to go there. Uh, to hear Darren and me talk, of course, but besides that, there are a lot of great reasons to be at Commodity Classic. We think it's one of the top farm shows in the country, and we just encourage you, don't miss it. Plus, it's a great spot where you will not see our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop this tough weed later in the show. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We counted. 
Why? Because we designed the Tiger Mate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on, Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. seasons are the same. Each brings its own set of challenges, and you've seen a few. So many threats, and not one single thing can be taken for granted. In the fight against the unpredictable, the Acceleron portfolio provides coverage on four fronts, fungicides, insecticides, nematicides, and bioenhancers. Rise stronger with one simple decision. Leading the charge in strip tillage for more than a decade, the Soil Warrior brings the future to your farm today. Morton is eager to make the building you've always dreamed of a reality. Visit us online at mortonbuildings.com. The Guardian Air Twin Spray Nozzle from Hypro produces a twin spray pattern with air inducted droplets for superior coverage, even in dense canopies. Be effective and efficient with your spray application this season with the Guardian Air Twin. Hypro, helping you spray better. When it comes to fertility, you know NPK. Okay, what's the third one? Well, I kind of hate that it's the third one, but it's potassium. I'm not saying nitrogen isn't important, phosphorus isn't important, but for our farm, our biggest yield limiting factor 10, 15, 20 years ago, heck, even five years ago, it was probably potassium. So we've talked an awful lot here over the last few years on Ag PhD about, you know what, it's not just parts per million. You got to have your potassium balanced in the soil, so look at your base saturation test. We want to see that number at least 4%, at least 4% K. So a lot of people have said, okay, first of all, why do I need potassium? Second, how do I get to the 4%? What's the math behind that? We're going to talk about those things today. All right, clearly we need a lot of potassium in our crop. It's a, a nutrient that we need in large quantities. You can go to the Ag PhD Fertilizer Removal app. It's a free download for your smartphone or your tablet and type in your crop and your yield goal. You'll see that for some crops, we need hundreds of pounds per year that we've got to pull up out of the ground in order to have a successful crop. Now you may be looking at corn and you say, well, I'm not removing that much. That's not my grain removal. No, it's not. But you do need quite a bit of potassium for your stalks. And if you want to have good stock quality all the way through harvest, you've got to have lots of potassium out there. Otherwise, you're going to start to see some lodging. You're going to see some plant cannibalization much earlier in the season, and it's just going to lead to poor yield and poor performance. And the other thing is poor grain quality. When you start thinking about test weight and just the overall kernel, how healthy is that? What's it going to look like for fines and everything else at harvest? Hey, if you've got great potassium levels in that plant, you're going to have better grain quality in addition to better yields, in addition to better stocks, in addition to fewer diseases in that plant. Potassium is ultra critical. Soils have a negative charge. We talk about this often when we're discussing soils. So they've got all these negative charges on the soil particles. Well, what do negative charges attract? Positively charged nutrients like potassium. When potassium is in a small percentage of those negative charge sites on the soil particles, well, you're not going to be able to find it. Your plant roots will not be able to get enough potassium quickly when you need it for crops, especially for a high demand crop like soybeans that needs a lot of pounds per acre per day of potassium when you're in the reproductive stages. The key to fixing this is increasing your percentage on these binding sites. 
we look at it on a soil test in the base saturation measurement. If you're below 4% base saturation potassium, that means less than 4% of those binding sites have potassium on them, well, you're just not gonna find enough in time to make the yield that you wanna make. So we'd like to see your base saturation K 4% up to maybe seven or 8% on the high side to get that ratio right. One of the reasons why this is important in drier areas of the country as well is because if you don't have a lot of moisture, and keep in mind, these nutrients go in with moisture. If you don't have a lot of moisture, well, how are you gonna get enough of that particular nutrient into the crop? You've gotta have a lot of it just flat out in the soil. So we wanna have a good ratio out there. We need to have quite a few parts per million, but again, it's gotta be in ratio because if you don't have enough in ratio, then there will be more magnesium, more calcium, more of something else getting into the plant instead of the potassium like you need. So let's just say, for example, you have 200 parts per million and you're at 2% base saturation K. All right, we need to get to 4%. That's pretty easy math. We just need to double the 200 parts per million, get up to 400 parts per million, and I'm not gonna say it's gonna be exact, okay? But that's gonna get you relatively close. So what we usually encourage you to do is if you want to hit it all in one shot and you can afford it, fine. But this is going to be a long-term investment. It's probably not gonna pay off in year one. So if you own the ground, we're super interested in this as a long-term investment. If you're renting the ground, that's where it gets a lot tougher to changing the whole base saturation K thing. In fact, we've had discussions with our landlords to say, look, either we're going to need a long-term contract, or if you would pay for the extra potassium we need, we'll pay you more rent every year, but we know we can't recover all that extra potassium in one year. It's gonna take two or three or four years. So we'll, we'll pay it off to you over time. We just don't wanna put all that money out there and then lose the ground. We get questions on the Ag PhD radio show almost every day about, Brian, Darren, help me calculate this out. I'm at one and a half percent base saturation K and I've got 185 parts per million. How do I figure out how I would get it up to 4%? Well, your soil test, I guarantee, is gonna have different numbers on it, but look at your parts per million, look at your percent base saturation K that you're currently at, and then figure out what your target is you're trying to go to. Regardless of what any of these numbers are, here's just the general formula. What you want to look at is your current parts per million. Multiply that times four, divide it by whatever your current base saturation is. Let's say it's 1.5. Okay, so you'd multiply it times four divided by 1.5. All right, so that tells you where you need to go in total, the total parts per million you need to get to. Now subtract off the parts per million you currently have, Okay, that tells you, all right, this is what I need to apply for parts per million. If we're talking pounds per acre, you need to just take a six inch soil test parts per million times two. That'll give you pounds per acre, and that's how much actual potassium you would need to apply. Again, as Brian said, you don't wanna go broke doing this. Do what you can afford, especially on ground that you own and you know you're going to have long term, and step your way into this. It's not a great return on investment year one, but it's something that's gonna pay off for many years to come. The other big thing I always tell people is worst case scenario, let's say you overdid it on potassium. Your potassium's probably not going anywhere. It's probably gonna stay in your soil for many years till you use it. So worst case scenario, you can just cut back on potassium in future years and things are gonna turn out the same. So I would just really encourage you to take a look at potassium. It's a huge nutrient for all crops. One other thing that will help you get more nutrients into your crop is to control weeds that are pulling nutrients away from the crop. Start by controlling our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how later in the show. Your planter is the single most important piece of equipment on your farm. Because without a uniform stand, you can't reach maximum yield. That's why Harvest International set out to design a planter that takes advantage of the newest innovations in planter technology. Built tough for high speed and integrated with the latest precision enhancements, Harvest International planters ensure every seed you plant today puts more in your bin at harvest. Harvest International, planting the future. College students often get the short end of the stock when it comes to paying for an education. I'm Darren Hefty with Ag PhD, and if you seek a career in agriculture, I have great news. My brother Brian and I are hosting our first ever collegiate agronomy workshop. In addition to agricultural information, we provide you the chance to walk away with a college scholarship. The best part? Attendance is free. The workshop is on Thursday, January 3rd at the Morton Center in Baltic, South Dakota. For more information and to register, go to agphd.com.
Are you looking for an easy way to apply dry powdered products to your stored grain? Do you want to use the applicator recommended by industry leaders for products like Diacon D and other dry powder products? Changing Time CT applicators successfully apply a diversity of products quickly, easily, and accurately. The innovative CT applicators are designed to give you the most accurate application of products such as talc, inoculants, fertilizers, and other dry products. For commercial use or on the farm, you need the applicator industry leaders are using. CT applicators for the changing times. And how about the big man, Pro Germinator? Yeah, this guy's got some experience in the field. But look at his stats. You can't argue with those kind of results. You're right. I know a lot of teams wishing their phosphorus player had those kind of numbers. Right, but this guy's not just phosphorus. He's got the nitrogen, the potassium, the micros. All those just add up to his phosphorus game. And his game is good. If you're looking to expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all-around grain handling solution. Our conveyor-based system uses an 18-inch belt and a 10-inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. I was talking to my ag banker early in the fall this year and I said, what is some of your advice you would give to farmers going forward? And he said, talk to your banker sooner rather than later. When times get tough, I know you don't want to go talk to the banker right away. You want to kind of figure things out in your end and, and figure out how can I still make this thing work. But the best thing you can do is get in, talk to the banker early because it's easier for them to work with you, especially if you're kind of in a tight situation if you get in there sooner. One of the most important things you can do when you go to talk to your banker is speak their language. It's just like if you spoke English and somebody was trying to talk Spanish to you, you're not gonna get it. Okay, so what does the banker know? Well, the banker knows numbers. So make sure you come prepared with numbers. And here's what I mean by that. A lot of times, bankers are simply looking at the numbers and they say, your expenses are way up here. I want you to cut them down to here. Okay, that's great to just talk about in general. So then, if you feel like, boy, I don't want to cut these expenses because then if I do, my yield's going to go down, which means my profit's going to go down, you've got to come with numbers to say, all right, let's break this down a little bit. Let's talk about, for a fungicide, for example, that's part of my crop protection expense. Okay, yes, we can call it expense, but here's how I look at that investment. If you have anything on your farm to show them yield data, even over the last 10 years, you go in with a yield map and show, okay, here's where I did the fungicide, here's where I did not. As you can see, I'm gaining more yield with that. Fungicide prices have come down. If I run the math, I gain this much yield, here's the commodity price, here's the fungicide price. All right, this is my return on investment. Oh, and by the way, here is on an APR basis what my return on investment is. If you go in and talk that way, your banker is going to go, oh, okay, maybe we need to rethink this overall cutting expenses. Let's cut specific things. So now let's get down to what is not making us money. That's what we want to cut. One of the great things about farmers is, for the most part, We've been working on return on investment all our lives and just didn't realize it. Think about it this way. If you're going to invest $5 in any crop input, how much response do you want to see? Well, you want to see at least a $10 gain. Well, that's a two to one return on investment. And then you think about when are you doing these things? Well, maybe you're applying a fungicide in June and you're harvesting in October four months later. Well, if you can get a doubling of your money in just four months time, well, that's tremendous. That's a tremendous annual percentage rate return. So talk to your banker about those kinds of things about, look, I'm not doing these things that I'm going to spend five bucks and get five bucks back. I'm, I'm investing five bucks and I'm getting $10 back. Those are great returns on investment. Yeah, the most important thing here, and this certainly is not rocket science, it's really just communication. But again, I just want to reiterate here, make sure you're speaking in the banker's language. Make sure when you go in to meet with the banker that you come prepared to talk about the things on your farm that are going to make money, the things you think, hey, we can maybe cut a little bit of this over here, but get to what the banker is really interested in. And quite frankly, 
exactly. You got to think about this the other way too. A lot of times we as farmers think, oh, the banker doesn't want to loan me money. That could not be farther from the truth. The banker wants to loan you more money. That's how the bank makes money is by loaning money out. So they want to loan you more. You just have to show them, here's why you should loan me more and I can make more money, meaning I'm good for paying that money back to you. And one of the ways to show that bankers with each input investment that you're making, have some yield data to back it up. Do some trial work on your farm each year and have a little study on your farm that, you know what, when I bump my planting population, here's my return on investment. When I spray this herbicide, well look, I left one little check strip and here's what the yield did. Uh, when I spray fungicide, leave a check strip and see what your yield differences are. That way you'll be able to make better decisions. You'll also be able to sell those decisions to your banker. Well, one of the things that's usually pretty easy to invest money in is weed control. We're going to talk about the weed control options for our Weed of the Week coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough, but we're tougher with unrivaled weed control, reduced drift, and near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Fleabane. Also could be known as Daisy Fleabane and, and this is one of the things, there are quite a few different Fleabanes out there and some of these names can get a little bit tricky so as you're identifying these weeds make sure you figure out what you've got because like for example this rough Fleabane it's just an annual weed so it's not a perennial it's nothing that you have to get too concerned about but here's the problem and here's where we get people that are saying oh man you got to give me something for this rough Fleabane because Roundup isn't working and it seems like oh no if Roundup doesn't work Nothing's <laughs> going to control it. I know, but we have all kinds of herbicides that will stop this weed. Quite often, we'll see it out in pastures. Well, you can get it under control with 2,4-D, dicamba. I like distinct. That's my favorite thing. Even Tordon, Milestone, they aren't terrible on this weed. So I, I'm not that worried about it. We've got plenty of options. Even in soybeans where you say, oh, Roundup doesn't kill it anymore. So what? Liberty does. Extend does. Uh, once Enlist crops come out, well, that 2,4-D is going to control it. So we do have options there. We're looking at the pre-emerge options. You do have a pretty good sized taproot if you let this rough flea bane get big. You can do some tillage, you can use the three pre's on soybeans and they would be effective. Yep, in wheat I'd go sharpen down. Post-emerge I'd do husky, it's not going to be fantastic but it's pretty decent. And then in corn I'd probably start with verdict and follow up with stacks. That's all the time we have for this week's wheat, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Out here, great yield starts with great weed control. That's why I choose the Roundup Ready Extend crop system, the system that makes the difference. Because only I know what it takes out here. Yield's what it's all for. But keeping my fields clean all season, that's what it's all about. This is my field. Farmers across the country have put their confidence in the Roundup Ready Extend crop system. These are their experiences. That early weed control to help combat those weed species is vital. I'm excited to see the new spray early bear program, and we've had great success with Extended Max tank mixed with Warrant and Power Max. And for 2019, I'm confident that part of the soybean yield success for our farm next year will include Roundup Ready to Extend.
The buzz on this line is probably the best in 10 years, both in soil and in the plant. Joe, you've been doing this for a while. What's your take? Well, Don, you take a player like high energy in, three forms of nitrogen, plus sulfur and iron with slow release technology, he's making plays all season long. Oh, look at his numbers. He's getting it done. But don't forget about in response. This guy's designed for a quick release nitrogen. It's looking like another championship season for Agro Liquid. At Estes Performance Concaves, we know how valuable your time is at harvest. That's why we designed the new XPR Concave System. The XPR System is the number one performance concave system on the market, surpassing the rest in both speed and efficiency, ensuring every last grain from your field gets into your tank. Plus, XPR Concaves work for all row crops. No more changing concaves, meaning you have less downtime. Take back your bushels this harvest. Get Estes Performance Concaves in your combine today. Commodity Classic is an early adopter's paradise. This is where what's next happens, where you can meet the people who are changing the way you farm. From the jaw-dropping trade show, to outstanding educational sessions, to one-on-one -on -one conversations with other farmers from across the nation, you'll be among the first to experience the new ideas, innovations, and technology that can help your operation stay profitable in times of challenge and change. Be in Orlando February 28th through March 2nd at the 2019 Commodity Classic. Visit commodityclassic.com. The future. Does thinking about it fill you with fear and doubt? Do you try to second-guess the grain markets just to keep your farm operating, or do you have a plan? At Swenson Investments and Commodities, we recognize that finances for every farm are unique and input costs and break-evens can vary dramatically from field to field. Swenson's grain marketing specialists examine your farm's break-even on every acre and create a plan to help you sell at profitable levels. Take the emotion out of your grain marketing. Call Swenson's grain marketing specialists today. Tired of that old warped poly boom ruining your spray applications? Express Boom from Hypro is a fully assembled stainless steel boom that ensures an even application of chemicals every time. Don't wait another season. Upgrade today. Hypro, helping you spray better. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. There are 6,272,640 square inches in an acre. We count it. Why? Because we designed the TigerMate 255 field cultivator and 2000 series early riser planter to maximize every single one. So when you create the most level seed bed in the industry and target a nickel size area to plant a seed and never miss, you'll know in high efficiency farming, there's one name to count on, Case IH. Rethink productivity. Learn more at caseih.com slash every inch. Most non-farmers don't realize that trucking is a big part of the job on the farm. With a tip on keeping those trucks on the road, here's today's Iron Talk. In agriculture, it seems like there's always something going on. When you aren't in the field, you're generally either trucking or working on equipment. In order to keep those trucks on the road, you need to keep up with licensing and DOT requirements for your state. The DOT wants annual inspections done on trucks to make sure that they're safe for operation on U.S. highways. If your inspections are due in the middle of the growing season, it's a real pain to have to stop what you're doing and get the truck in for an inspection. Certainly, maintenance is a 12-month-a-year job, but we're always trying to schedule our inspections for a time where we can afford our trucks to be off the road for a day or two. If you haven't had your inspections done yet, right now or at some point later this winter could be the best time to get them out of the way. Once you set up your annual inspections to be done at an ideal time of the year for your operation, they'll stay that way for the life of the truck. One last note, something that stood out in the harvest season of 2018 was that downtime with any piece of equipment hurt the entire farm operation. So don't let that be one of your trucks. Keep up with maintenance and the licensing of your trucks to maximize productivity. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now back to the show. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we'd encourage you to check out the Ag PhD radio show. We're on each weekday on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central. And don't miss the next Ag PhD TV show. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.